car positioned on runway 09 right at Heathrow and will demonstrate a normal takeoff. We advance the thrust levers just enough to allow the engines to stabilize. As they stabilize, we press the toga switch, which stands for take off and go around, and the thrust levers automatically advance to give us the same thrust indication here as is written in green above them, the demanded engine pressure ratio. As the speed increases, the pilot keeps it straight by using his feet on the rudder pedals which activate the rudder fine steering on the nose wheel and normally the captain would have his hand here until we call V1 speed. Before V1 he can close the throttles and abandon the takeoff but as he reaches V1 he moves his hands clear because from now on he's going to get the aircraft airborne. As he reaches rotate speed he pulls the control column back and the aircraft lifts clear of the ground. As soon as it's clear of the ground, he asks for the gear to be retracted. We select the gear up. The gear indication here shows when the gear is retracted. Then that will blank and all 18 wheels are in the belly of the aeroplane and that indication goes out. As soon as we have heightened speed we can start to retract the flaps. The flap lever is here and shortly we'll be retracting the flaps as the speeds are commanded. When we reach our flap retraction speed the command cursor moves automatically to the limit speed and as we pass the flap 10 limit speed which is indicated here in green we select the flap to 10. As we do so the lower limit changes and the flap 5 limit speed is indicated. The command airspeed cursor continues to move to the limit speed. When we reach the lower limit for flap 5, we select flap 5. At that point, the engine thrust note can be heard as the thrust reduces to climb thrust and the flap 1 limit speed is shown. As we reach that limit speed, we can select flap 1. As the flaps run from flap 5 to flap 1, the last of the trailing edge is retracted and all that remains extended from the wing now are two sections of the leading edge. As the limit speed increases for the flap again, you can see the command cursor automatically move to the limit and when we reach the lower limit of a clean aircraft, we select the flap up and the upper airspeed limit of the flaps increases again and is completely out of the picture. We'll now continue to fly at this speed until air traffic control gives us clearance to fly any faster. And if air traffic control cleared us to climb at a faster speed, we can increase the command bug by increasing manually the speed on the glare shield. The aircraft will now pitch down automatically and accelerate to the new commanded speed. To finish off on the primary flight display, let's have a look at the modes at the top and the way that the altitude works. Currently we're level at 6,000 feet and we have an indication of speed which tells us that the aircraft is flying a speed in VNAV out which means that it's flying the altitude as commanded by the flight management computer and the steering mode is LNAV so it, it's flying the track as commanded by the flight management computer. 
If we were now to command it to climb to 8,000 feet, we would notice here that the commanded altitude would increase to 8,000 feet. And once we press the button on the glare shield to release it from its current altitude of 6,000, we see an enunciation of thrust reference, which means that the engines are increasing to climb thrust, and the climb mode becomes VNAV speed. It's still flying the speed, but it's no longer locked to an altitude. The command in the center, it's still flying the LNAV track, so the FMC is still commanding the direction in which it's going. If we were to now select heading on the glare shield, this mode enunciation would change to heading select and the aircraft would turn, as you see it banking here, to the commanded heading. As the aircraft reaches 8,000 feet, VNAV speed changes to VNAV out to tell us that it's capturing the altitude and speed is once again enunciated on the left hand side. Heading select is still our steering mode and as we approach the commanded heading the aircraft will roll its wings level and continue to fly that heading until we tell it to do something different. Now we're going to look at the nav display. If we look at the nav display here it's quite clear that ahead of us we have an enormous storm. I've programmed this storm in the simulator and the worst areas of rain and turbulence are the areas indicated by the red and the yellow. Clearly it would be hazardous to fly through this storm if it were there in real life and the pilot would get clearance from air traffic control. He would put the aircraft into a turn either to the left and the right a lot earlier than we have done to make sure that he turns away from the storm and avoids it. As we start the turn to the right, we can see the numbers increasing here on the compass rows at the top and the commanded heading is at 124 degrees and the aircraft will turn onto 124 degrees to avoid the worst part of the storm. If we look to the top right here, we can see CLN which stands for Clacton and that is what we call our active waypoint. Since we can no longer fly to Clacton you'll notice here that the distance to Clacton will shortly start to increase as we fly away from it. The time indicated above it is the time that we'll be overhead and that information is generated from the flight management computer. This information down here, which also says CLN and stands for Clacton, is where the VOR information is indicated. Clacton VOR is radiating and that green line there points to the facility on the ground. And as you can see, we're 11.1 .1 miles from it at this moment. Once we clear away from this storm and get away from it over here, we'd be able to turn back towards the track that we desire. If we were to turn the aircraft back now, we would actually fly through the middle of this storm. But as I say, we're in the simulator, and so what we're going to do is turn the heading bug back and actually fly through the center and join our original track. Once air traffic control clear us to join the original track, we select LNAV on the glare shield and the aircraft would fly straight towards the next active waypoint which is Clacton. In this case we don't want to fly to Clacton so we're going to quickly program the management computer to fly to this position here, Tulip. Once the computer is programmed and the command is executed, the position tulip changes to a magenta color and tulip up here becomes our active waypoint 
and the flight management computer flies us straight towards Tulip.